That's how gangsters roll. Hey, I'm Paul Inside Info, and I'm going to walk you through um, the remix which I've done for DC Breaks of Gambino. And so, as with all remixes, you get sent some parts. So they sent me some parts, um, which were fantastic. It was basically every element of the song. Um, the stabs, the sub, all the risers and effects and everything. Um, drums as well, which is quite unusual because you don't always get set drums, but it was nice to have them. And the vocal. Um, so when I got the parts, what I normally do is I'll just sort of have a think about what direction to take it in and what to do. Um, so I sketched out a really rough, rough as hell idea for what could happen. And the idea was that the vocal starts off in the intro with um, some effects under it, like an alarm or something like that. And then you get a Reese coming in um, and then it builds up. So, so what I've done there is I've just basically taken a really basic Reese sound um, from my library of sounds that I made with a Pro 2 keyboard and just sketched it out. So that was kind of like, right, that'll be cool. And then I've got to drop it into something um, that's different to that or that maybe carries that on or something. Um, so after I sketched it out, got all the parts. Once I'd got the parts, I started to do some sound design with them um, and processing them through different effects and stuff to try and get different variations of the sounds that I could use in my version of the track. So I'm going to show you a little bit about how I did that. So this here is the project starting to take shape. Um, although it actually sounds completely different to the final version, but you have to start somewhere. So what I did was I'd made a bunch of different um, variations of the bass stabs and things like that that they'd given me. Um, now let me just find these. Here we go. So I'd gone through and just processed the bass stab through a bunch of distortions. Um, and then resampled them off. I think that was the one I was using. Anyway, so once I'd done that, um, I started to build a bass line and, and put things together. Um, and then, so if I play you this, we've got the vocal now in the intro. The trusty Reese, which I kicked out eventually, but I always knew that that was not going to be the final thing. Um, and then, like, just dead space where there's supposed to be a build up. Um, and then it drops into something completely different. Um, so yeah, as you can hear, that's totally nothing like the final product. Um, I was going down this road because I was trying to sort of replicate the original um, and stick close to that, but do like my own interpretation from it. And I like stuff that's made up of loads of sounds. That's generally what my style is. So um, so there's loads of different sounds here, um, which are just like random stabs. This is a bass stab again from the Pro 2. You notice that I use Falcon pretty much on everything. It's, it's like my go-to because I tend to work mainly nowadays with just samples of sounds that I've made um, rather than using VSTs straight out of the box. Although I do use them for doing things like melodic stuff and things that I haven't got samples for. Um, but I just do find it a bit more inspiring working with samples recently. Um, so I've got a bunch of other sounds here as well, like little risers and things. I don't know what this is actually. What is that? That's like a reverbed version of their one of their stabs, I think, um, just used as a riser. 
Um, and then there's some, what's this stuff? This is, oh, that's some splashy rides. Which always add a bit more energy to um, a track. And then you've got subs, and then there's a, there's a pretty, there we go. So this sound here. So this, this sound here was actually the reason why the track changed course completely because when I was writing it, I kind of, I thought this sound was terrible and I wanted to replace it. So I just put this in there as a, as a placeholder for the time being. I think it's a preset from Avenger, crispy bass, it's like a standard dubstep wobbly thing, which is, which is all well and good, but um, I didn't really want to use that. So what I ended up doing was having this this thing, which I thought sounded pretty cool, although I wasn't quite happy with it, but I thought it would get better with time. Um, in in an attempt to make this sound better, the the whole remix ended up totally changing. Like the whole structure and the way it was going to be was totally changed because of the sound that I ended up making for this. So that's what I'm going to show you now. Right, so this is the project that I've used I've, it's a new project and it's the project that I've used to make the sounds the um, the re-sound for the remix and so what I did was I just started with a blank canvas I bounced a version of the track without um, any of the bass in it so you've still got the step of the original that I was using there um, and I've used Avenger to make the sound. Um, so, where are we? This one. Oh, no, no. It's, there it is. Um, so there's a couple of attempts there. That one. That might be a preset, actually. Um, should we see? Yeah, that's just one of their presets. I'm trying to find similar sounds that... that sounded like the lead that they used in the original by sort of scanning through some presets in some of these synths and i thought that avenger i'd actually just got this synth as well at the time of doing the remix so i wanted to learn a bit about it so i thought it would be a good excuse to dive into this and and learn it a bit more um on the remix so that worked out pretty well um and so what i've ended up with is this which is, um, it may have been, I think it may have been one of their presets already that I've sort of shaped, the, the, I think the preset that I used had a, an envelope on it that was similar to what I wanted. So I've then scanned through the waveforms um, that are provided with the synth and found one that sounded pretty good out of the, um, out of the box. And because, I mean, you know, generally I would try and make my own and stuff, but I, one, I couldn't be asked, and two, I was at a deadline. So I was kind of just going through stuff and trying to get it done quickly. Um, so you've got a bit of automation on the cutoff there. And there's also an automation on the shaper as well, which is kind of giving it that sort of... And there's, um, oh, when do I get out of this? I haven't actually used this for a while since I did this. Um, okay. Brains. Okay. Oh, there we go. Right. <laughs> Pro tips. Um, so you've got a bit of distortion on it, a bit of multiband distortion and an equalizer. This seems really good. It's got loads of stuff built into it. And even though it is like, I think, a lot of people overlook this synth because it's sort of aimed at the EDM market, if you like. And I think drum and bass producers tend to be a bit turned off by that. But it is really good. Um, you can do so much stuff with it. You don't have to make it sound like David Getter or something. You can you can really go in and do some really cool sound design with it. Um, and then on this channel as well, there's a bunch of effects. Because we like effects, there's a bit of trusty melder on the sharpness to give it more of a kind of... Actually, let me turn... Turn these off and then there we go. A bit more harshness because the sound itself is quite harsh and the, the very slight shift in format as well. Um, so we got that and then we've got a.
trash, which just um, squashes it down even more and puts some saturation, faulty transistor on the top end, weathered in the mid, and there isn't any low, so there's nothing on there. Um, do love trash as well. It's great for shaping sounds, and this sound needed to be quite horrible, so it's always good to use. Um, and then, finally, good old Centaurus from D16 um, to add a bit of stereo width. Um, there were some other ones as well, like this driver thing, which um, gives it real horrible wet quality to it. Sounds like a wet fart, um, which is always good. Um, bit of EQ. Maybe put a bit of satin on there as well. So that was cool. So I was like, okay, this this is a cool sound. So I sort of this was the idea that stemmed from that. I was going to do. So that was what I thought could work: is having the the Reese alternating between two different kinds of Reese, if you like. This one being a more, even more messed up version of it, but with similar um, a bit of unison on there for a bit more stereo. Um, M unison, very good plugin for doing stereo stuff. I have to say, at this point, Melder stuff is just indispensable for me now it's like i use it on everything it's so good um and they've just launched version 11 which is a, the, the interface is a lot better um and there's so much potential you things you can do with these plugins they've got they've all got like built-in lfos on every parameter and stuff and um you can really really go into everything they can be a little bit confusing um sometimes it takes you a while to get your head around things but they are worth the slog in learning them um so anyway so so then i'd sort of sketch this out and edit um so at this point i was like okay this this is a different to what i've done but i think i would prefer this kind of direction um so I stopped working on it for a little bit just to go away and think. Um, and I actually ended up just going on a bit of a binge um, of some old Dillinger tunes, I think it was. And yeah, I'll show you that. Quickly. Gangsters. 